Life Church. Y'all put your hands together. Come on. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. With holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder. The King of glory, the King of all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. You laid down your life And I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Chaos back into order. Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of Glory, the King of Glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of Glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set Then my 
my sight High above my life I will trust in you alone In you alone Come on And when you go, I'll go When you stay, I'll stay When you move, I'll move I will follow you Who you love, I'll love How you serve, I'll serve
stone was rolled away you took the keys and conquered hell and grave now death has lost its sting it holds no hold on me now I can see a song to sing Jesus I love you oh how I love you you have my heart my everything my everything come forward and we're just going to worship our Father through prayer. We're going to seek Him out. I don't know about you, but I believe in a God who can do immeasurably more than we can even ask or imagine. He's a good God. And he's amazing. And so don't wait. Come on now. If you've got anything on your heart, anything in your life that you just want to come to the church and pray about, let's do that together. Let's do that here. Let's do that now. Come on. There's plenty of people down here.
to sing Jesus I love you oh how I love you you have my heart my everything now I can see
filling your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Your promise still stands. Oh, great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. Somebody praise. Somebody praise our Father. Well, good morning, morning, Life Church. How are you doing today? You may be seated. I'm Angel. I'm Pastor Joel's wife. I tell you what, just want to remind you, God will not fail you. I want to give you a quick report. We've got all kinds of cool things that have happened this week. Um, if you would, get ready to go share our live stream on Facebook. I'm telling you, we have upgraded some equipment. It's looking good. We're working out the few little tweaks. Uh, but also, you can share that to your Facebook feed. And I found out this morning, you can share it to your story, too. So there's all kinds of ways to get the word out about Life Church. And I want to just encourage you that as we have prayer time up here, on Sundays, take advantage of it. Last Sunday, I came in agreement with prayer with one of my sweet sisters up here for a, a grandbaby that was having some in utero complications, and they thought that there was going to be some major issues with that baby, and she gave me the report this morning that that baby's all good. So I just want to let you know that God is answering prayers up here and doing miracles, and if you're standing in the gap believing for somebody, don't give up because God's not going to fail you, so you hang in there. Um, a couple quick announcements, if you would, if you would silence your cell, cell phones. We want to say good morning to everybody via Facebook. We're so glad you're watching. We have got a great day planned. It's back to school blessing. So we're going to get the kids up here and pray for the kids and the students and all the faculty that works in our schools. You know, we want God's protection over them and we want them to have an amazing year. So we're going to be praying for them. Also, we've got uh, a great word about Rebecca. I think Rebecca is one of my heroes in the Bible. Uh, I love Rebecca and so much. I named one of my Rebecca's Rebecca and, um, 
So, and it's spelled like in the Bible. Joel asked me yesterday, he's like, how is it spelled like our Rebecca? I'm like, yes, baby, that's why I spelled it that way. <clears throat> I had to blow me. Even the preacher asks questions sometimes. But um, we've got cool things going on today, snow cones after church. So be sure you grab your know, snow cone provided by Lady Anne's. We're excited about that. And also, if you would, if you've got little ones um, in service, we have fixed a beautiful cry area out there for you. And we ask that you would just take your little ones out there. You can watch on the new monitor now. We do ask that if you don't have little ones, you don't hang out around there. Um, just because we want you in here in big church with us. Big church. You can tell I used to do kids' church. We want you in big church. And um, so we're going to go ahead and get ready to watch our bumper video and move on with our series, uh, Running with the Giants. Hey, we're so glad y'all are here today. As Angel said, it's, a, it's an awesome day, an exciting day for us here at Life Church. One of my favorite days of the year is the back to school blessing. We love praying a blessing over our kids, our teachers, our school uh, administration. We're going to do that at the end of the service today and uh, pray that they would have a successful year, a safe year, and a year that they grow in their relationship with Jesus and not a year that they are uh, pulled away from that relationship with Jesus. And that's really why <clears throat> we like to take a Sunday as school gets ready to start back and pray over all of our kids and, and teenagers and college students and teachers and everyone involved in our school system. So we're excited about that. And then, hey, uh, there's nothing wrong with snow cones after service on the house. Come on, they're on us. So... Uh, They'll be outside when you get through, and, and they'll stay as long as they need to. So uh, hang out with us, have a little bit of, of, of fun, eat a snow cone, and visit a little bit before you um, leave today. Uh, if you would, go ahead and take your worship guide. I'm going to begin speaking here in one second, but before I do, I want to just give a special shout-out and thank you to uh, several people that worked hard this week to get our new uh, video equipment installed and tested and in and running into as you always do when you do stuff like that you run into a few little snags along the way and there were guys willing to to come late at night and even very very early in the morning climb up in the attic and pull wire and do things and so I just want to uh to thank those guys I know especially Mike Ryder he got up there one one day as soon as he got off from working all day he got up in this attic and pulled wire when he came down out of the attic he was dripping wet and he <laughs> He said, how early can I start in the morning to finish this thing? And so he came back the next morning real early before going to work and finished. And then my son-in-law, Austin, who's back in the booth kind of running everything, he spent most of this week up here with these guys. Danny Page came up and helped us a lot. Uh, Jason Hill and, uh, and, and then, you know, several others that, that contributed. But those guys really put in some hours this week in making this happen. And then, of course, he, he doesn't go to our church, but... The young man that really kind of helped us get all this set up, Peter Tuberville, and he was here all week and just did it from the goodness of his heart, didn't want to get paid anything, even though that's what he does for a living, and, uh, and uh, he's, he's surely checking. He said he'd be checking out the live feed this morning to be sure everything went okay. He's watching, so we want to thank him, and he had a brand new daughter born, I think, yesterday or this morning early. Um, yeah, he was up here all week. Yeah, come on. He was up here all week. And uh, he, he put in the most hours, or as many hours, I'll say, probably as Austin, I think, and some of these other guys. And, uh, and he had a wife 42 weeks pregnant. 
And uh, I'm like, dude, do you think you ought to go home? Maybe your wife's a little upset. And he said, man, she don't need me until it's time. And so uh, <laughs> he got the job done. So what a blessing. And uh, we, we appreciate him. Hey, if you have your worship guide, go ahead, if you would, flip it over on the back. You can follow along with me. Take a few notes. We're in a series called Running with the Giants. It's a series that we've done before, actually a couple times over the years. Other churches have done the series. It's based off of a, a book that was written several years ago by John Maxwell called Running with the Giants. And the whole premise of the book and the series is take a, a, some Old Testament giants of the faith, uh, many of who are, are listed in Hebrews chapter 11, and, uh, and, and, and kind of... Uh, you know, what if we could have a, a little quick chit-chat with them? What would they tell us about, uh, what would their advice be to us on how to run our race? The race? You know, they finished their race, and they're now enjoying the reward of being faithful and committed and going all the way and not quitting, and what would they tell us? Hebrews 12, verse 1 says, Since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that entangles us, and let us run with patience or perseverance the race marked out for us so they're witnessing and watching us run this race what would they tell us we've taken several this will be our seventh uh giant from the old testament we're going to do a couple more weeks before we're finished and then we'll be starting a new series in september that i'm excited about called anxious for nothing how many know the bible says we should be anxious for nothing the one of the most pros prescribed i read this this week one of the most prescribed medications in America right now is uh, different uh, uh, types of anxiety medicine. We all d are dealing with anxiety. We're going to look at what the Bible says for several weeks about anxiety, how to deal with anxiety issues, and I'm excited about that series. But we've got a couple more weeks in running with the Giants, and today we're going to take, you know, we've done six weeks so far, and uh, they've been all men, and I know some of the women have been like, hey, you know, what's up with that? So today... We're going to take a woman from the Old Testament. Come on, ladies. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. If you're not any more excited than that, hey, we'll just stick with men. But, you know, no, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> but there were some. I already did. But, hey, <laughs> there's some great men and women uh, from the Old Testament. And, and, and this is one, as Angel said, that um, we have always loved and we talk about the Bible, even from being married young and and, and, you know, even actually at our, at our wedding, this scripture or her story was a part of our wedding, the story of Rebecca. And uh, we, we then named one of our daughters Rebecca, as you know, and, uh, and she's sitting here on the front row working with me in the church. And uh, it's always been a real special story to us. And so I want to speak a little bit about Rebecca. What would Rebecca tell us if she could come down out of the stands and say, hey, let me give you, let me give you a little bit of advice on how to run your race. Now, I'm going to talk about an aspect of Rebecca that, that really, I don't know that I've ever even talked about this aspect of her life, but as I began to prepare for this message, I, I really saw something about her that, that I had never seen before, and I think many times is overlooked, and so I, I want to kind of go from that angle today and, and give you a few things you can write down and take home with you. The bottom line, I think, is this. If Rebecca could come down out of the stands in heaven and say, hey, let me give you a little bit of advice. Those of you that have been in this series already know that the advice is usually something very practical. We try to be very practical at Life Church. I think that's helpful to, to, to dig into the Bible for practical things on how to live. Here's what I think Rebecca would tell us. I think she would tell us this. When people ask for your help, give generously. Come on, be generous or go the extra mile. In other words, Learn how to be a generous person in your life. Now, I'm not talking about just money. That, that obviously is a part of this, but, but I'm talking about generosity as it pertains to your, your character, your, who you are in, 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 in how you approach life, how you approach serving others, how you approach um, you, you know, finances and giving and all those things. I just think she would say, look, when somebody needs your help, don't do just what it takes to get by, but, but learn how to be generous. And the reason is there's a scripture in the Bible that says uh, generosity opens the world up to the generous person. In other words, when you learn how to be generous, 
it will open up the world to you. And I believe Rebecca's story is a, is a perfect example of this. If you're not familiar with her story, let me give you the kind of the setup and then the, the quick overview of the story because it's amazing. Uh, Abraham, as you know, had a son, Isaac, the son of promise. He had waited a long time. Matter of fact, they were 100 years old, basically, he and Sarah, when they had Isaac. And so it, he was a miracle child. Come on, if you have a baby at 100 years old, it's a miracle. And for more reasons than one, but anyway, he, it was a miracle child. And this Isaac began to grow, and, and, and he was the, the, you know, God's promise to Abraham. And it was getting time for Isaac. He was marrying age. And so Abraham, you know, knew, okay, Isaac needs to get married, and, and uh, I want him to marry a good woman. I want him to marry a woman that's not going to, uh, you, you know, interfere with his faith in God. Abraham was the father of faith. He raised Isaac to be a, a man of faith, and he knew the wrong woman can mess up a man of faith. Come on, somebody. And by the way, the, the wrong man can mess up a woman of faith, too. And so Abraham thought, man, I don't want Isaac to meet this pretty woman that's got all the physical attributes about her, but doesn't love God and maybe serves and worships idols. And, and so, uh, he, he, you know, and, and look, let's just be honest. He didn't really completely, I don't think, trust Isaac to pick his own wife sometimes come on now you know my girls are past this stage but i know what before they were married i kind of wanted to go back to these days you just let me pick him y'all know what i'm saying because how you know when your kids start picking you know boyfriends and girlfriends and uh, the, the trust level is just not real high there if you know what i'm saying now i do realize that nobody's good enough for them but 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 in all seriousness we get worried about you know will they Will they go for the wrong things? And if they do, how will that affect the rest of their life? And so Abraham, he, he had this idea. He said, I'm not even going to let Isaac be a part of this. I'm going to get my right-hand man, and I'm going to send him out to find the perfect woman for Isaac and, and, and to be his wife. So he told his, his right-hand man, he said, I want you to go out. I want you to find a woman that would make a perfect wife for for Isaac, I want you to bring her back, and, and we're going to introduce her to Isaac and tell Isaac, this is your new wife. Get ready to get married. And that's exactly what they did. So here's the story in Genesis 24. Uh, the servant, the right-hand man of Abraham, is getting ready to go out and look for this wife, and he prayed and said, O oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, give me success today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I'm standing beside this spring. He had gone down to where... The people would come and water their animals, thought this would be a good place to, to you know, try to find the right mate. This is, this is the eHarmony.com of Bible days. Come on, somebody. I'm looking, for a, I'm looking for a woman, for Isaac. I need to go down where the women do the work and find a good woman for Isaac. And so he went down. It says, he's praying. He says, I'm standing beside this spring, and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a girl, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to wait when I see one that I, you know, because he, look, he wanted to do right by Isaac. He didn't want to find some, you know, some, some homey-looking, ugly girl, even though she did love God. Come on, somebody. You know, come on. when I was wanting to get married, and, you know, I thought, man, I want a woman that loves God with all her heart, and I want, you know, man, I want her to be, she, I'm going to be, I'm a missionary. <clears throat> she's got to want to go around the world and live in tough places and do all these things and that's the kind of woman I'm looking for but she also needs to be pretty come on somebody and, and I was introduced to a couple along the way and, and you know oh, she loves God her heart's after God and I thought you know she'll make a good sister in the Lord but <laughs> that ain't her come on somebody y'all know what I'm saying anyway so he's wanting a pretty woman but he's wanting the right woman and so he, he says, when I see her, in other words, the first thing is I'm going to see her and say, hey, I think Isaac would like her. But then here's the next thing. When I see her, I'm going to say to her, please let down your jar that I might have a drink. I'm thirsty. Could you get me something to drink? And if she says, drink and I'll water your camels also, let her be the one that you've chosen for your servant Isaac. Notice how specific. You know, when you pray, come on, you need to get specific in your prayers. When you begin to pray and believe God for something, don't just do some general, you know, just broad ranging God, I just want you. Get specific. So he got so specific, he said, 
I'm going to ask her to give me some water, and she's going to respond back and say, I'm going to give you water, and I'm going to go ahead and water your animals while we're at it, and that's going to be the one. That's, man. So he said, by this I will know that you have shown kindness to, your, to my master. Before he had finished praying, isn't it awesome when God's moving before you even get through praying? Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. Come on. And when she walked out, he said, oh, I think Isaac would like her. The rest of the story is he said to her, look, would you give me some water? I'm thirsty. And she said, absolutely. Not only that, while you're taking a little break and enjoying some water, I'm going to take care of all your camels as well and give them water. He knew this is her. He took her back. You know the rest of the story. They were married, and it was a miracle thing. Now, I want you to understand. Let me give you a little, just a little context to this. I, I thought, you know, that sounds so, oh, okay, well, she gave him water. She watered his animals too. You know, I've got a little Yorkie, and I, I don't know how much our Yorkie weighs, but how much? 3.3 pounds. I'm amazed it's that much. I mean, she's like a little rat. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, like she, you know, she has this little water bowl. And I mean, you know, we don't put that much water. I mean, she just, she's little. So I'm thinking water the animals. Yeah, that's cool. She's going to water. She's going to give a little water. But it's, you got to remember, it's not water his Yorkie. It's water his camels. Come on, somebody. And average in these days, they would travel with about 10 camels. Let me just give you a little context. So here's this, this, this right-hand man of, of Abraham with 10 camels. And he says to this young girl, by the way, Rebecca was very young. It's disputed how young she was. There is some, some thought out there on the Internet that's absolutely crazy, so don't go research, research in the Internet because it's ridiculous. But she was young. She was basically a, a young teenage lady that had just crossed over into that you know they married young back then and she had just gotten to that age where she was the right age so she's young and here's this older man who says hey can i have a drink she says yeah yes sir i'm gonna be sure here, here you go i'm gonna get you some fresh water and while you're doing it, i'm gonna take care of all your animals 10 camels now these camels average that one at just one drinking about 20 gallons of water yeah, it's not a yorkie <laughs> So 10 gallons, or 10 camels at 20 gallons is 200 gallons of water. Now they had a, the, the average, uh, uh, the biggest, I'll say, jar at the time in, in Bible times that they would carry to, to do the watering with was a five-gallon jar. They were smaller, but I'm going to assume if she's watering camels, she had the biggest jar that they would use. So if you got 200 gallons with a five-gallon jar, that's 40 different trips down to the creek to water these animals. Now look, I, I'm going to be very, very, very conservative and say each trip down to the creek and back up to where the anim, animals were tied off and the servant was, would, let's just say three minutes each, which is booking it. So if, they did, if she did 40 trips to the creek at three minutes each, she spent over two hours watering Abraham's servant's camels. And all he asked for was, hey, just give me something to drink. How many of you, see, here, here's the thing that I learned as I began to really study. I, you know, I was getting ready to speak on Rebecca and said, Lord, I don't want to just talk about the things we always talk about with Rebecca. Give me something that, that maybe I've missed and I haven't seen. And it's just like the Holy Spirit opened it up to me and said, look, Rebecca, even from a teenager, was a very generous person. Parents, let me encourage you. You can teach your children from even a very, very young age how to be generous with their life. I mean, you need to start teaching your children how to be generous with their life. You know, when our kids were growing up, we, we've, you know, we have always, since before Angel and I were married, we both were tithers and would tithe and give. And when we got married, we said we want our kids to tithe. And from, from, from the very first birthday they ever had where they would get money, you know, if they got $10 for, for their birthday, we'd tell them, look, now, want that first dollar's for the Lord, those other nine are, are yours, and put it in the piggy bank. And, and we taught them tithing, and, and then, you know, have now watched as they've grown and, and, and become adults and, you know, pay bills and do all those things that they still do that. And I, I think generosity is something that can be taught. I, I think one of the things that the servant realized about Rebecca, even though he had not yet met Rebecca's parents, he knew she comes from good stock. She's a, she's a woman of character, man. When I asked for a drink of water, she went above and beyond. She's a generous person. That's the kind of woman I want for, 
for, for my master Abraham's son. And so they were married. So if, if Rebecca could come out of the stands and say, hey, you know, you need to learn how to be generous. You and I would probably say to her, well, well give, me some, give me some tips, give me some keys on being generous. What, can I, what, what do I need to know about being generous? I want to tell you what I think she would tell us. You can write them down as we go through them. I'm going to try to go quickly. I think one of the first things Rebecca would tell us is this. You can't be generous and legalistic at the same time. Generosity and legalism do not mix. And this is, I see this in the church so often on two different spectrums. One is, you, you know, in the church when, when we become legalistic about giving and money and, you know, and we, we preach, you, you know, overboard about giving money and you got to give money. If you don't give money, you, I, you know, I, I can remember, uh, you know, back in the day learning and hearing so many people preach that, you know, the Bible says if you don't tithe and give, you're cursed with a curse. And, and I heard preachers stand up and point their finger and say, if you don't tithe and you don't give, God's going to curse you. Well, how many of you understand God, He does not curse us? We're already under a curse. The Bible says we're born into this world that is is now under the curse of sin and the consequences of sin. In other words, we start out cursed. So what I've learned about giving, it can't be a legalistic thing. Man, I'm going to tithe so God doesn't curse me. No, I'm tithing because I'm cursed and I want to get out of the curse and into the blessing of God. The Bible says when you give to the Lord, you, you pass that first part to Him, then He sanctifies and blesses all the rest of it. So we can't be legal, legalistic about giving. Uh, you know, we, it's, it's, it, but here's the other thing. We also can't be legalistic on the other end. Oh, well, I give because, you know, when I give, I get blessed, and, and I'm going to get that hundredfold return, and I, I give, and God's going to bless me. And, and that's, that's also another form of legalism. You don't give to get. You get to give. Man, when I give every week, here's what I say. God, I am blessed that I have something to give today. I was talking to one of the men in the foyer this morning. I said, how are you doing today? He said, today, he said I'm, man, I'm blessed. I woke up. I said, come on, man. Isn't it? The older you get, boy, you wake up in the morning, you look around and say, thank you. <laughs> you know, you don't think about that when you're young. Well, I'm the same way with, with, with money and, and, and resources. And when I'm able to give, I, my first thought is, God, I get to give to you today because I have something to give. You can't be legalistic and generous at the same time. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 says, Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give. We, we have never at Life Church, you've never heard us say, you know, you've got to give a certain amount of money. You've never heard us pressure to give money. You've never been in a service where we took up more than one offering. And that's because we feel very, very passionate about, I'm very, I feel very strong about this. I don't want, I don't want you know, offering time and, and, and giving to become an obstacle to people who are seeking a relationship with Jesus because it can become an obstacle. But at the same time, I want to be sure that we understand that, look, we are God's people. We're, we, look, if Jesus is on the inside of us, we are a generous people, and we've got to have an opportunity to be generous. Come on, somebody. Let each man give as he's decided in his heart to give. People ask me all the time, you know, we, we, we wouldn't be talking about a need. We were talking about getting cameras and video equipment for our stream. And somebody said, how much is that going to cost? I said, a lot of money. Well, how much? I want to give towards it. I said, well, I'll tell you what. Just do this. You pray about it. Whatever the Lord puts on your heart, give it. Well, if I knew how much, I, you know, I, I, I said, no, no. You just do what God tells you to do. I don't want you to give enough to buy all the equipment, uh, you know, unless you want to. I don't want you to feel like, well, my Lord, you know, that's going to that's cost more than I thought, but let me go ahead and give and let me have on, you know. No, I don't want that. You do whatever God puts on your heart to do. Not reluctantly. In other words, if you, you know, if you do it, but you hate doing it, you might ought to ask whether or not you should do it. But here's the other thing, not under compulsion either. Don't be forced and pressured. And For God loves, here's the key, a cheerful giver. 
When Rebecca watered his camels, she wasn't complaining. She wasn't griping. He didn't ask her to do it. She thought, well, maybe it'll be worth my while to do it. She offered to do it out of her, the goodness of her heart. She's just, she was willing. Why? Because she's that kind of person. She's just a generous person. So look, God loves a, a cheerful giver. Here's the second thing, and, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this one, but this is something that, that I learned from my spiritual father, Brother Billy, and he's gone to be with the Lord now. But, but here's what I learned from him. And I think Rebecca would tell us, you can't take it with you, but you can send it on ahead. Rebecca didn't realize, but by watering this servant's camels, she was, listen, she was securing her financial future by doing something that she had no idea that that was even going to be the result. She thought, I'm going to water this man's camels. I'm never going to see him again. She didn't realize he's going to take me to back to a, a man named Isaac who was a miracle child of God who's going to marry me and he's very extremely wealthy and going to be sure that I never want or lack for anything else in my life for the rest of my life. You know what she did? She sent something on ahead in her life. Matthew chapter 6 says, Don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust don't destroy and where thieves don't break in and steal. Look, Brother Billy used to always tell me, Look, brother, we got to be sure we're laying up treasures in heaven. Austin, this week, hope you don't mind me telling this but he sent me a picture a screenshot of his a 401k thing and he got you know a statement and he's like it went down this last quarter or whatever it was and and i saw i texted him back i said don't look at that thing <laughs> every time you get it it will it, it's going to drive you crazy it's an average over a long period of time you're going to be all right don't panic i've been there that's just about how secure the the financial system is today it, this, I've known people I know two people personally who lost one millions in the stock market crash years ago millions of dollars it can happen you know what when you give into the kingdom of God whether it be your money your time your your talent your service when you give into the kingdom of God it, you've sent it on ahead. It's treasures in heaven. And how many of you know that the market in heaven never takes a dip? Come on, it's always going up. So you, you can't take it with you, but, but you can send it on ahead. We've all heard the saying, I've done it. You know, I've preached before lots of funerals, obviously being a pastor. And we've all said, you know, you've never seen, you know, uh, a, a U-Haul trailer pull behind a hearse. You know, you can't take it with you. And, I remember I heard the story of this couple, older couple, and the, the man was a very, very wealthy man. He was, you know, getting up close to age. To, he thought he would pass away, and he told his wife, he said, Honey, he said, when I die, I won't take all my money with me. I worked hard for it. I don't want to leave it. He said, when I die, I want you to put it in, in, the, in the casket with me and, and bury it with me. I won't take it with me. She said, well, it's your wish, baby, whatever you want. He passed away. They had the funeral, and, and, uh, and you know, they, they were at the graveside about to close the casket. She walked over, and she dropped an envelope, in the, just a little bitty envelope in the casket, and she kissed him on the forehead and walked away, and they closed the casket and, and buried him. And one of his friends walked over and said, Hey, I thought George told you when he died he wanted you to put all his money in the casket. He wanted to take it with him. She said, I did. I wrote him a check. Some of you got that, okay? You can't take it with you. Look, when you give, especially in the work of God, I'm telling you, you are, you are, it's, here's how I look at giving. It's an investment in the kingdom of God. Man, lives are being changed. Children's lives are being shaped. Missionaries are reaching souls. We're feeding the hungry. We, we, uh, it's, you know, just last week, we're able to buy the school supplies and clothes for you know a, a struggling uh, uh, per family in our church 
not because the, you know they asked for it and not because simply because we could we wanted to we did and then this week he called me and said man look I want you to know that that we were so blessed by that we ran into somebody else and we don't we didn't have a lot to give but but we're able to take some stuff and give it to them because they need it more than we do and and I'm thinking man that's what we're doing we're investing in the kingdom of God number three write this down I think Rebecca would tell us this you can't wait for the feeling it will follow man I have people all the time who tell you know well I you know I I just don't feel led <laughs> you know I'm like I didn't ask if you feel led I asked if you would help I mean you know when you come up to me and say I'm moving next Saturday I need a lot of help moving I never feel led to help you move I, you never gonna get the response out of me Woo! I was waiting on somebody to ask me to help them move next Saturday I'm there I'm gonna probably say how bad do you need me real bad and then I'm gonna probably say I'll pay somebody and send them to help you but anyway that's no I'm just kidding but you're yeah you can't wait for the feeling the Bible says this and this is one of the most misquoted verses in the whole Bible for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I've heard preachers preach this for years. And they say this, where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. That's not what the Bible says. It's not what your treasure is not going to follow your heart. Your heart is going to follow the treasure. So in other words, you know, I, I've learned that when when I'm struggling on whether I want to, how involved I want to get in the work of the kingdom of God, whether it's my money. I mean, how many, we know missionaries. We have missionaries out of our church. You know, Alberto's a missionary. And, and uh, every time we talk, every time I talk to Beto, he's probably watching. I'm just going to tell him, every time I talk to him, he asks for some money. <laughs> the other day he asked me for money and how much you need. He told me, I said, he said, oh, come on, you can stroke a check for it. Just say, yeah. I said, no, <laughs> I'll pray about it and get back to you. I don't feel led. But anyway, <laughs> that's what missionaries do. You know what I'm saying? And I can remember early on in, in this learning this whole generosity thing, I used to think, man, I just, you, you know, I, I, I don't want to do it. I don't, my heart's just not in it. Here's what I learned. When I, when I began to do it before my heart was in it, before long my heart got in it. And now, I don't know which comes first. They're kind of, it's almost like they're, they're, it's a, a, a race, a competition, and they're neck and neck. I mean, I, I want to do it, my heart wants to do it, then I do it, and I want to do it more, and then the more I do, the more I want to do, and, it, and I just believe that's the way it works. Man, when we were missionaries, and, you know, we, we were living literally, you know, phone call to phone call to the office to see if somebody would send a little money in to help us out. Uh, we were tithing we had been tithing since we were married and and we were struggling and and the, i was praying one time i said lord you know i'm i'm tithing we're still struggling i don't know what to do and and really what i was hoping the lord would say is look you're a missionary everything now I'm, I'm just being transparent my mind was telling me everything you have is in the ministry i mean you, you're not buying nothing for yourself Every dollar you get, it's, it's for the ministry or so y'all can be here to do ministry. You don't really need to be tithing. You, you, everything you have is going in the work. So I was praying about it. And I thought, maybe the Lord, you know, maybe that's the Lord. Maybe he's going to tell me, hey, just take a break from tithing. And, you know, to, to, because, yeah, you're putting everything you got in the work. So I'm praying, Lord, you know, that, that 10% is not a lot, but it would help. And, and you know, I, I'm kind of feeling this. You know, maybe I just need to just since everything I have is going into work then I don't really need to give to it and I'm just telling you this is personal I'm not telling you what to do personal the Holy Spirit spoke to me I said what do I do he said give 20% I said I rebuke you devil in Jesus name I seriously thought I ain't. look I, I'm telling you I'm struggling on 10 and now you want 20 I, and but that was so strong. I went to Angel. I said, look, I, we need to start giving 20%. The Bible says 10. A tithe is a tenth. 
I said, I know that. I done rebuked the devil and everything. I know what you're saying, but look, I'm telling you what, the, what, what I believe the Holy Spirit's saying. So we did. We started giving 20%, and we gave 20% for a couple of years. I can't remember exactly how long. And, and you know what? God not only sustained us through that, but it was, it was the season of greatest increase in our finances when we were missionaries, when we began to do what God told us to do. Look, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The, the fourth thing is this. I think she would tell us, I want you to write it down. Even the smallest acts of generosity make a difference. You know, I think a lot of times when it comes to generosity, we have this feeling of, I just don't, you know, what could I do? If it's money and we're thinking of giving, we think, man, what's my little old offering going to do? It's, they're not going to miss it. It's not going to help. It's just a little bit. You need to understand that even the smallest acts of generosity make a difference. I mean, for Rebecca, it was just, hey, look, I'm going to go a little bit, you know, extra, and I'm going to take care of your animals while you're taking a break and drinking water. It's just a little thing. But it made a huge difference. Matthew chapter 10 says, If anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he's my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. I tell you know our kids team all the time, those guys and girls that are over in kids' life right now today, every week when you show up early and you give your all to minister to you know the littlest, youngest kids in that building, you're giving a cup of cold water to those kids but the Bible says you're giving a cup of cold water to Jesus and you will not, come on, lose your reward man that cafe team out there we never talk about the cafe team and give a shout out to the cafe team but look, thank God for the cafe team they're up early, they're getting donuts they're making coffee, they're, they're restocking water, they're cleaning the pots after church when we're already in line at the restaurant to eat and, and we don't think about it we never even think about what they do until and i remember the one sunday we had a communication breakdown and there were no donuts here i mean no everybody knew then who the cafe team was and what they do i mean look you know what they're giving a cup of cold well in this case they're giving us a cup of hot coffee you know what they're doing? Every time they hand you a cup of hot coffee, they're handing a cup of hot coffee to Jesus. And the Bible says they're not going to lose their reward. Oh, man, come on, look. Every little bit counts. And every little bit helps. The last thing is this. I want you to write it down. And this is my favorite. I think Rebecca would tell us when you give, you give to the Lord. Look, you, you need to understand that about everything you do in the kingdom of God. You're not doing it for a person. You're not doing it for a church. There's nothing wrong with having a heart to want to help a person. There's nothing wrong with having a heart to want to help your church. But understand at the end of the day, I'm not giving it to them. I'm giving it to the Lord. I remember at one point in my life, we were given into a particular ministry and... and and after giving for a while and sowing into that ministry, we found out some things about the ministry that weren't necessarily good. And I remember, you know, first of all, being frustrated. I'm giving my hard-earned money to you, and you, and you, then you go off and, you know, are doing stupid things with money like that. And I was angry. I was frustrated. But then I also remember worrying about, well, Lord, all that money I put, that was in bad ground. In other words, all that that I gave into that, I, you know, I'm not going to get anything, you know, spiritually returned for that. Because, And the Lord spoke to me and said, you didn't give that to them. The minute it left your hand, you gave it to me. I'll deal with them. Don't worry about it. But that don't affect anything you gave because you gave it to me. You didn't put it in that ministry. You put it in the kingdom of God. I'll deal with that ministry, but you know what? You, you just keep putting into the kingdom of God, and when you give it, you realize I'm giving it to the Lord, and, and, and I'll bless you. Matthew 25, I tell you the truth, verse 40, whatever you did for one of the least of these, you did it for me. Proverbs 19, 17 says this, generosity to the poor is a loan to the Lord. Now look, I didn't write the Bible. I had a person actually one time I shared this scripture came up after church and said that's bad theology I said what do you mean 
Well, the Bible says that it's a curse to be in debt. And, and, and you said that, that when you give to the poor, you loan to the Lord. That puts the Lord in debt. And the Lord can't be under a curse. That's bad theology. I said, now I'm more confused than you are. I simply read a Bible verse. You go figure out. Well, I don't, man, I don't, you know. The Lord looks at it like this. When you, he sees you. And look, you know, it, thank God it's in the offering and, you know, the tithes and offerings. And we do all these things around the world and in our community. But it also, when you buy that meal for somebody that you see in the restaurant that you know needs you to buy that meal. When you're at the grocery store and there's that single mom literally, you know, counting coupons and her last few dollars, telling them to hold something off the scanner for a minute to be sure she has enough money, and you say, hey, just scan it, and I'll pay for whatever the difference is. You know what the Bible says? You at that moment, just you just gave a loan to the Lord. Now here's, you say, well, what about what you said, though? If the Lord can't, here's why it's a loan to the Lord. The Lord's in heaven seeing that single mom going I want to pay for her groceries but I, I don't just rain dollars out of the top of the grocery store down on them people anymore that's just not how I do it I need somebody to and then you step up and say hey I'll pay it you know what the Lord says thank you I'll get it back to you I wanted to do that but I, I needed a way to do it you did it I got you covered don't worry about it in other words you're not going to be out anything generosity to the poor is a loan to the Lord and he will give a reward to the lender come on somebody so here's what I think Rebecca would tell us look you'll never be more blessed in your life than how generous you become I believe she would also tell us you'll never be more like Jesus than when you're at your most generous moment for God so loved the world that he gave his only Gotten son. Man, that convicts me to the core. When I complain or worry about giving one of ten dollars to the Lord, and then I think of the verse that says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only, and not dollar, son, so that you and I could have eternal life. Come on, bow your heads with me this morning. With our heads bowed and eyes closed for a moment. Please don't get up or leave. We're going to bring the kids in shortly and pray over all of our kids. But before we do, I want to pray for you. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, I just believe the Holy Spirit's been speaking today. I felt like, again, I had a, a, an assignment to bring you this message today. I just believe that there are many of us in this room that we're blessed. I mean, we're blessed. We know where we came from and we shouldn't be where we are but we are and I, I think the Holy Spirit would challenge you today look if that's you if you if you know where you came from and you know you shouldn't be where you are because of where you came from then just be thankful and generous that you are where you are and God's going to continue to bless you in other words I believe everything I have comes from the hand of the Lord I believe he's been good to me Angel and I talk about it on a regular basis we want to the other say we shouldn't have what we have. We shouldn't be where we are, but oh, we're so thankful that we are. Because we know where we came from. We know the journey. We know what we didn't have. We know at times what we probably shouldn't have. But then we say, God, you have been good to me. And because of that, Lord, I want to just be generous. The truth is, I'm not ever as generous as I really think I should be. But I won't. I constantly pray, God, help me to be generous. Come on, would you just begin to pray softly before we bring the kids in right where you are. If you're here today and you say, man, I'm not right with God, would you just take a minute right now and begin to pray and say, Lord, forgive me. Open my heart to you. Change me. Maybe you're here and you're challenged and you're convicted by this word and this message. And just be honest and say, Lord, I need to learn. I need to be more generous. I need the ability to be more generous. Holy Spirit, set me free from greed and from worry and from control. And God, help me to learn how to be generous. And when somebody asks me for a drink of water to go the extra mile, do above and beyond. 
when somebody asks me for 10 minutes of my time, be willing to give two hours of my time simply because that's the kind of person that I am. Lord, forgive us today, those of us that need to get right with you. and We thank you for it, God. Change our life today, God, we pray. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Lord, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, would you check this door? I think they're going to be ready to come in. We want you to hang in with us. We're going to pray over all of our, our students, teachers. So if you're in here, come on, and you're not over in kids' life, maybe you're, you're a little bit too old for kids' life. Not yet? Okay. Don't hurry up. If uh, if you're here and you're maybe in college or you're a teacher or, you know, bus driver, anything connected with the school, would you come on now and join us in the front while they get the kids and, uh, and we'll get ready to pray a blessing over all of our kids. Come on, y'all, y'all just make your way. <clears throat> make your way on up here if you would. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Y'all, yeah, 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 y'all stay down front. We'll let the kids come up on the stage. Awesome, 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 awesome. Well, what this tells me is they, they think when I'm closing, that I'm a long-winded closer because I said, look, when I start closing, y'all, you know, somebody's going to come get you. Y'all come on. And I guess they think, oh, we got, you know, plenty of time. He, he talks too much. But here they come, I think. I think. Yeah, they're coming. They're coming. That was going to be in here, I thought. But anyway. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We improvise. Hey, uh, yeah, I want to be sure Jay, Rebecca's not here today. She's pregnant and um, very, very pregnant. Angel is going to join me and Jake and Pastor TC. There he comes. I asked TC, Pastor TC, our care pastor, to come help pray for kids and students. You may not know this about TC, especially those of you that have only gotten to know him the last couple years, but but. We call him TC. It's Tim Coates, by the way, if you didn't know that, but just TC works well. We call him, uh, or we ask him to be a part of this because TC was in student ministry, kids ministry for over 30 years before he came to Life Church. And he kind of sort of semi retired from it. But he's kind of like, you know, uh, let's bring some of the kids up here with us. I'm sorry. Y'all come on up here, up here, up here, up here, up here. Awesome. Awesome. We're going to take take our time, let them get here. We could have brought more up here, but that's all right. It works, it works. It's my fault. But TC's kind of like, you know, when you're a missionary. We mission, Anybody who's been a missionary says, once a missionary, always a missionary. Or you've heard the saying, you can take the boy out of the country, you can't take the country out of the boy. Well, you can take the man out of student ministry, but you can't take student ministry out of the man. And so TC still constantly speaks into our youth, our pastor, youth pastor, leaders, our kids, our teenagers, and so I ask him to join me. I want to give a, a couple of scriptures to all these these students. And uh, I know you're looking out that way. That's okay. You can listen from behind. But uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says this. And this is my challenge to all you about to go back to school. And not only students, teachers as well. But Romans 12, verse 2 says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But be a new and different person with a fresh new way of doing and thinking in your life. Basically what that scripture says is don't go into school, go back to school, and then try to be like everybody you see at school, but rather you be the one that everybody else wants to try to be like. You go continue to be a leader and and be faithful to your convictions and you know don't give in to the peer pressure and all those things John 17 says this Jesus was praying by the way for the world for people 
And he said this about those who were his, that had made a commitment to to be a child of, of God. Jesus said, I have given them your word. He's praying to God. He says, I've given them your word, and the world has hated them for it. For they are not of the world anymore. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them in the world from the evil one. That simply means this to all my students up here. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. Be different. Be willing to be different than everybody else. And just because everybody else does it, be the one willing to say, I don't do what everybody else does. I do what I know is right. And you know what? Before you know it, people will start wanting to be like you instead of you trying to be like them. Don't give in to that pressure. I know they gave, they already gave the little, all right, everybody has a little, little thing to take with you. Put it on your backpack or, or whatever, and it says, be in it, not of it, Romans 12, too. That's so you'll be reminded. All year when you look at that little thing hanging on your backpack or your keychain or whatever, the cross, if you got a cross, whatever you got, when you look at it, just uh, here's what I want you to hear. Be in it, not of it. Wake up every morning, look in the mirror and tell yourself, I'm going to be in it today, but I'm not going to be of it. I'm going to be surrounded by all kind of influences and things, but I'm going to be me all day long and not be like everybody else. Come on, if y'all do that, I believe God's going to bless you today. We're going to pray over all the, all the students, and I'm going to ask Angel and, and Jake and TC to help me, maybe even move around. Let's try to lay hands on as many as we can while I'm praying and uh, pray a blessing uh, over them. By the way, Jake's got a very special refuge service this Wednesday night for all the new students that are coming in. If you can't tell, he's a little excited. So, um, But that's this Wednesday night at 6.30. If, you're, if your child's moving up to refuge, have them here this Wednesday for 6.30. It's going to be awesome. Come on, let's pray. Church, would you extend your hands this way and help me pray over all of our students and teachers and faculty this, this year. Father, we love you. We thank you today, Lord, in Jesus' name. That God, all these young guys and girls, this year, God, they're going to be in the world. They're going to be in school, but they're not going to be of the world. Lord, they're going to be surrounded by, Lord, all kind of influences. They're going to have all kind of temptations. They're going to be faced with all kind of enticements. But Lord, I pray for deep conviction on the inside of each one, from the youngest to the oldest, to be different. To God, to, not to follow the trend, but to set the trend. Not to, Lord, be the one who's influenced, but be the influencer. God, to be the one that, that says, I'm not giving in to the pressure. I'm not caving. But Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray for protection. Lord, we know that God, we've watched the news. We know what we see happen over and over and over again. And God, right now in Jesus' name, we thank you that in Washita Parish and our region, God, it will not happen. But Lord, there will be a hedge of protection around our schools. That God, there won't be a, a shooting or, Lord, some kind of crazy danger. But God, we'll be blessed, we'll be protected. Lord, we pray for protection. God, we pray that your angels would be encamped around, God, our schools. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that any plan to do evil, Lord, would be overthrown and be thwarted and be stopped before it happens, God. We thank you for it, God, this year. Lord, we pray for great success, Lord, for our students. I pray that, Lord, those that have struggled this year would do better academically than ever before. God, we pray for those that have been successful. They would continue to be successful. God, we're praying for a blessed, blessed, blessed year this year as we go back to school. God, we pray in Jesus' name that we'll get up every morning and, and, and go and give our heart and our all in what we do. God, believing you to bless our day. And Father God, I pray for those also teachers and, and, and administration from our schools that God, in Jesus' name, Lord, you would give them an anointing not just to teach but God, to impact lives. To realize that every student they look into the eyes of is an opportunity 
to affect that child forever for the rest of their life and not miss that chance and that opportunity. Father, we thank you for it. Lord, bless our students, our teachers, our faculty this year as they go back to school. We speak that blessing over them. Lord, I speak the blessing over them. May the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, and pour out his grace upon you every day this school year. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Come on, give it up for all these that are getting ready to go back to school. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our kids back through the store. Parents, in just a couple minutes, you're going to go pick them up and then and then visit the snowball, snow cone, lady ants, snow cone. By the way, church members, Sky and Casey Hibbert, they're the ones that own that. They're going to be outside serving snow cones to everybody that wants a snow cone. Don't leave yet. Come on, everybody's headed to snow cones. Wait a minute. i got an offer to take up first. I mean, we preach some giving, right? I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward. Awesome. If you would, take a couple minutes right now if you need to and prepare to give. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. Let's go ahead and stand and get ready to pray and get ready to give. If you'll help us pass these buckets around, that would be awesome. And uh, again... Once we dismiss, Jake will let you know when you're free to go. Help us just for a couple minutes past these buckets. If everybody takes off, it's kind of hard to, to navigate the offering. So if you'll hang in just for a couple minutes and pass the buckets around, that would be great. Uh, is our band back up? No. I forgot to call the band back up. Y'all come on quick. Run, though, because <laughs> I forgot. But uh, we're going to pray and get ready to give. Let me mention just a couple things. Uh, again, snow cones for everybody. Uh, so hang around if you want a snow cone. It's on us. Get one. Visit and uh, catch up, fellowship a little bit. Also, next Sunday is Water Baptism Sunday. We've got several uh, that have already signed up for water baptism. If you want to be baptized next Sunday in water, uh, we're going to do that right here on the platform during our 10 a.m. service. Uh, if you would, go to our website, or you can put it on a Connect card, but the best way to do it is go to our website, lifechurchwm.com, and you'll see a tab there for water baptism. Click on it, fill out a little form. It emails it straight to us, and then we can get our list put together. So be sure you sign up for that. Uh, if you would, take that Connect card and tear it off of the worship guide right now. If you filled that out, we're going to ask you to give that while we're giving our offering today. And uh, if you have a prayer request, be sure you let us know what that is. But the biggest thing is, just remember, next Sunday is water baptism. And so we're excited about that. Come on, let's pray and then let's give together. Father, we love you today. We thank you, God, for your blessing in our life. Lord, we've talked about being generous today and God is I believe the desire of most, if not all, of our hearts in this room to be generous. Lord, we, even if we struggle with it, Lord, it's our desire to be generous people. So, God, we start not by waiting to fill it, but, Lord, we start by putting our treasure there, knowing that our heart's going to follow. And so, God, as we give today, we're not giving to the church. We're not giving to a need. We're giving to the Lord. And God, as we give today, we're investing in the work of the kingdom of God. And Lord, that makes our heart happy to know that we're playing a part, investing in the work of the kingdom. We thank you for it today, God. Bless each and every one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, help us pass these buckets around.
wonderful week. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. Refuge Wednesday night.